Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jeffrey from Achieve Ed. Today we're gonna to be talking about how I was able to get all fives on my AP exams throughout high school. So I took 10 AP exams from my freshman year to my senior year from pretty much every subject, social studies to math to English to science. I didn't do a language one. Um, that's probably like the only thing. Uh, but yeah, basically I wanna like teach you guys some tips on how I was able to get all these fives. Now, as always, before we get into this video, make sure you guys are subscribed to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. We're gonna be posting a lot of videos this summer, so uh, make sure you don't miss a single upload. Okay, so the first thing I wanna tell you guys is don't use the textbook. It's pretty much useless. Like for studying for the AP exam, it's way too detailed. There's so much stuff in these textbooks that you just do not need to know for the AP exam. Now, like if you actually wanna, I guess, learn uh, about the subject, then maybe reading the textbook is a good thing or maybe your teacher wants you to read it. But if you're just wanting to get that five, I mean, there's just so much information in these textbooks. Like think about the history textbooks. They have all these specific anecdotes and like primary sources and figures that you just like never need to know for the exam. And even for like the math uh, exams, the textbooks have all these problems that you're never gonna be asked to solve on the actual AP exam. So it's pretty much a waste of your time to be reading the textbook to study for the AP exam. Instead, I would recommend you guys use special AP study books. So like the Barron's books or uh, the Princeton Review books, Five Steps to a Five. I've personally used all three of these before and I personally have liked Barron's the best, but I mean, that's something that's up to you. But any of these kinds of AP review books are infinitely better than just reading through the textbook. Okay, so the second tip I wanna give you guys is actually kind of related to what I just said, um, but you can actually go online and you can find these College Board exam descriptions. Uh, these are like super long PDFs, but they basically tell you like everything you need to know for that course. So you can kind of just like skim through this PDF and now you know what College Board is gonna be asking you. If it's not on this document, they're not gonna ask you it on the exam so you don't need to worry about it. Now once again, this is all about prioritizing and strategizing your studying. Like you could read the textbook, you could study everything in the course, but that's kind of a waste of your time and you only have limited time to study for these exams. A better use of your time, especially if you're somebody like me who likes to, you know, kind of procrastinate the studying, um, is to focus on what you need to know most. And uh, you can do that through the AP review books that I talked about earlier. And you can also do that through these College Board exam descriptions. I forgot to mention, but these are super easy to find. Like you literally can Google it, uh, say the name of your AP course, College Board exam description. You're gonna find the PDF right there online. Okay, now I wanna talk about what I think is the best way to study. Um, for me, that is definitely practice exams. You can read all you want about how to write an essay, or you can look at 100 math problems and see how they solve it, but until you pick up your pencil or pen and actually do it yourself, right? You're not getting that practice in. It's not the same thing. And even for like the history exams, you can read all you want about it, but until you're applying it to actual questions, you're not getting that practice. Luckily for you, there's a lot of ways that you can actually get these practice exams. You can get them from the review books that I talked about earlier, like the Barron's book. I know they have a lot of practice tests at the end of their books. You can find them online from third parties. But what I think is the best way to get practice tests is actually through your teacher. Your AP teacher has access to these secured practice exams that you can use in the classroom. And these practice exams are directly from College Board. So College Board literally like takes previous year's questions and slaps them into these practice exams and sends them out to all the teachers. So taking these practice exams from College Board basically prepares you for the actual exam because the questions are so similar. And even for the third party practice tests, those are still pretty good as well, although they're not like 100% reliable because, you know, it's not from College Board themselves. Bottom line, 
get in a lot of practice. I used to do like one practice test every couple days in the weeks leading up to the AP exam. And sometimes my teacher would actually have classroom time to do these. Now jumping off what I just said, another way that you can really get your practice in is actually through the publicly available FRQs that College Board posts online. And these are literally the previous year's FRQs. So go ahead and take advantage of it. Take those practice FRQs and then use the scoring guidelines to check your answers. College Board posts these exams for like, I don't know, 20 years or something like that, sometimes even longer. So you have plenty of material uh, to practice those FRQs. And speaking of scoring guidelines, definitely know the grading of rubrics. Know what gets you points, know what you need to include in order to receive points, know what not to include, uh, that'll get points taken away, right? You gotta know these rubrics because with these exams, it doesn't matter, I mean, how much you write or how eloquently you write it. It's just about, did you have this? Check, gets a point, right? If you don't have it, no point. That's just how it works. So know the grading of rubrics. For example, for a lot of the tests that have like essays in them, they want a thesis in there. And if you don't have a thesis, no point for you. And another example in math, they want you to show all your work, write down all your steps, and then finally get to your final answer. And another thing I think for the calculus exams, they specifically want you to include three decimal points uh, you know, for any non-integer answer. So just knowing these things is really important because you want to rack up the points. That's how you increase your score. That's how you get the five on the exam. Okay, so the last tip I wanna give you guys is about knowing your margin of error. You don't have to be perfect on these AP exams to get a five. I know I definitely was not perfect, but I still got the five because there is a scale involved. So just knowing that margin of error is really important. And luckily there is a lot of online resources to help you with that. There's this site called appass.com and they have all the AP exams and you can kind of tinker around with it. Like uh, see how many multiple choice questions you need to get right in order to get a five, uh, how much you can afford to lose in the FRQs. And this website even shows you like a graph uh, to see like how close you are. And it also shows you like the percentage of students that got each score for each exam. Now I do want to like kind of caution you guys that um, APPass.com is just using past year's data. I think they're using like 2016 data or something like that. But this at least gives you like kind of an idea of what you can afford to lose. And why is this important? First, uh, you can know where you need to focus your studying. So if you realize that for an exam, you can get like half the multiple choice wrong and still get a five, then you know the multiple choice is not that important. You should focus your time on the FRQs. And the second reason that using APPass.com is important is because you can kind of focus your studying between exams as well. So if you notice that, you know, AP Macro has like, a, I think it's like a either 15 or 20% five rate, something very high like that, then you know generally the exam probably is a little bit easier. On the other hand, Physics 1 has like a 4% five rate. Um, and at least for me, when I was inputting my numbers, I was like kind of tinkering around with the multiple choice and FRQ numbers a bit. And I was always getting into the four category. Um, so I had to spend a lot of extra time studying physics. Now, maybe that's just me. Maybe, you know, I'm not a science person, which kind of is true. Um, but still, like, uh, that's something that I had to determine for myself. So that's how I knew I needed to study a lot on physics and not as much on macro. Okay, so I think I've pretty much covered everything that I wanted to say. These tips have kind of been what I've been doing uh, for the past four years. This is how I was able to get 10 fives on my AP exams. And of course, there's a lot of other generic tips that I didn't say, like uh, study a lot, um, like uh, don't procrastinate, like generic stuff like that. But I wanted to get really down in the nitty gritty and talk about like specific things that were important to me and how I was able to get those fives. Okay, so that is gonna be it for this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed this one. Go ahead and give it a like if you did. And also make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel if you haven't already. We're gonna be posting a lot of college advice videos throughout the summer, so you do not wanna miss a single upload. Okay, so until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace.